Okay, so let's talk some more about polearm versus sword. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark, a VPN service that helps keep your personal data safe and adds an extra layer of online security. Sort of like increasing your armor rating on the internet. It shields you from trackers used in targeted advertising, alerts you if your logins have been compromised, and can prevent price discrimination or content restrictions aimed at your location. The encryption through VPN tunnel makes it harder for ID thieves who try to get a hold of essential data like your credit card info. Surfshark can be used across all kinds of platforms on however many devices you want. There's 24-7 live customer support and 30-day money-back guarantee. Check out the link in the video description. With the code SCAL you get 85% off and three extra months for free. Social distancing, this is the way to go. So um, one thing that people often ask is why don't you just cut the polearm? Like a sword could just go right through the polearm. And uh, if that was the case, I don't think anybody would have used pole arms in real life, in history. However, the pole arm, of course, is going to get damaged. And there are ways to avoid that. For example, uh, if you hold your pole arm out, and, and this guy who just wants to destroy the pole arm, I come in, I want to cut the pole arm, he doesn't need to keep it there. If he dips it under, there. And that's pretty easy to do. That's, that's a very common technique with quarterstaff as well. You just deny them that contact, you disengage, and you thrust. That's the ideal. But um, even if there's, there's contact, what he doesn't want to do is just statically block it. This is not going to be great. Make no mistake about it, this is not going to just go through in one cut and hit him in the head. That's movie nonsense. That doesn't happen with a properly made polearm. This one's rattan, historical ones would have been ash, they've used oak too. Hickory is great for it. He wants to minimize the amount of force that's being transferred to his polearm. So if I come in, he can just yield, basically, and use my own force against me. So he absorbs that and whips it around, and that's way less harsh impact on it than it would if it was just held statically. Plus, if he wants to knock my sword aside, there isn't actually necessarily contact directly on the edge. So this is actually going to contact the flat. So this I actually hit exactly on the flat. And in that case, there's no damage to the polearm. If I do it from the other side, again, this is against the flat, but at the same time, it is going to damage the polearm. We did it just earlier, like in earnest, so to speak. And yeah, you can see it. In fact, there, there are some actual cuts into the pole, so you shouldn't downplay the damage that happens. Or, I mean, the damage that happens to any weapon in real combat. Blades get nicked, they get bent, they get broken. Several cuts here, but nothing actually cut all the way through or broke it. And definitely see that in the spots where there was just incidental contact, where it went against the sword at an angle or, you know, otherwise deflectional. Nowhere near as bad. So here's some minor stuff. That's from contact at an angle on the edge or against the flat. There's a tiny little superficial cut here. This went in, looks like a millimeter. So not that big of a deal, but of course it's cumulative. So over time, the pole would definitely get destroyed. No doubt about it, unless it's reinforced. This is quite a deep cut. So that's trouble. Basically, if this was hit uh, in the same way from the other side, that will go through. So you could get through in two or three cuts if you hit the exact same spot, which of course isn't terribly likely. The hickory shaft did better, and I would expect oak to also take less damage than ash wood. It's really only direct edge contact that becomes dangerous. 
Deflecting the flat of the sword blade is the best way to defend. It's unavoidable when attacking and the sword user tries to parry with the edge, though. There's exceptions, but generally the sword is, is going to have the edge, haha, in terms of durability. Pole arms are easier to maintain in that if it breaks, you, you replace the haft. So it's not, and especially if you're, if you're dealing with a spear, that's pretty easy. Or a quarterstaff, for that matter. If the quarterstaff breaks, you get a new one. It's not that expensive. It's not that big of a deal. And usually, as, um, as a polearm user, you generally use a sidearm. Because if... Well, what I want, basically, is if you just hold it out, if you're just being a lazy bastard, what I want, basically, is contact with the pole so I can grab it and do something. So at this point, he, he draws a sidearm. There are a number of different ways of doing it. I can knock it from here. I can come around for a false edge cut, boom, which primes me for the follow-up strike. I can come in with the butt end and either strike with that or come down. There's, there's a number of things I can do that minimize contact with the edge. If I step over here, I have an even better angle for it and I've just thrown him off too and then we can continue fighting from here. So they're not fragile but they're definitely not invincible by any means. In fact, the Old Norse sagas are full of spear shafts breaking. They mentioned that quite a number of times, you know, axes breaking, spears breaking, partially because it's dramatic and it makes for a good story, yep. but also because it's just what happens. So hope that clears things up. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Catch!